three years ago, I had problems walking. I had problems keeping my balance. I had a tumor in my throat, in one of my parathyroid glands. This changed my life. It changed my career. Wikipedia referred to the condition I had as the disease of stones, bones, abnormal groans, thrones, and psychiatric moans. And I had all kinds of symptoms. Locomotion impairment, fatigue, osteoporosis, kidney stones, anxiety, lack of motivation. To a certain degree, I also had disorganized thoughts. To be sick is hard, and it's frightening. And when I thought that life couldn't get any better, I needed to invite my parents to live with me. <laughs> don't get it wrong. They are lovely people. I just don't want to live with them. <laughs> the reason I needed my parents, it was that some days I couldn't do the things that we all take for granted, like getting up in the morning, making my cup of coffee, take my dogs for the morning walk, bring my daughter to school and myself to work. If there is something I know today for 100% sure, no discussion, I do indeed prefer to go to the toilet alone. <laughs> I also understood that we all can get sick, and if we do, we need to cope. And it's not only me, it also had consequences for the people around me. For example, my daughter, she was also scared. One evening she told my mother, with her very crisp and sharp personality, Grandma, I don't want to know how sick mom is, period. So to be able to deal with this, to cope together, she and I created games. We also wanted to laugh about it. So we were betting on how many steps I would be able to do. I also tried to cope in my professional life. I'm a neurobiologist. I work at Uppsala University, where I'm a researcher and I'm a teacher. And during the last 15 years, I've been devoted to investigate nerve cells exactly the same cells that was not working for me at this time. So, from a scientific point of view, I found this time really interesting. One day I was coming back with a train from a conference to Uppsala. I got off at the platform, and there, once again, my system broke down. I was stuck on the ground. I couldn't get anywhere. This time, I didn't find it interesting. I actually freaked out. And I managed to call a friend, a colleague, that came directly to help me to the hospital. I want to encourage everyone in this room, anyone looking at this TEDx, to remember that in your professional life and your personal life, if you meet someone who needs help, you can always make a change. You can make the turn, you can go back, say hi, can I help you? These acts are actually crucial for the people that are sick and trying to cope. I was lucky. I only needed an operation. 2013, in October, I got the tumor out of my system. And this is a selfie of me a few hours after the operation. And I have this smiling scar that is reminding me how important health is, how quickly it can change, and that we need to do what we believe in right now, because we can't do it. So what do I think about spending your
your time. Having this experience of being sick, I decided that I wanted to use my knowledge as a neurobiologist to more directly assist people that are facing neurological challenges. I didn't know how. I only knew that I wanted to adjust the time, way I used my time. April 2014, it was a Friday evening, and I received an email. It's from a non-profit organization in Sweden working to move new innovative technologies to the healthcare system. And they emailed me about a technology called Rehabilitation Robotics. In this picture, you can see example of exoskeletons, what we also call them. And they are developed to assist people who have had a brain or spinal cord injury. And the logic behind this therapy is that we need to be able to walk to relearn how to walk after an injury. I also like to add that there are robots developed for hand and arm rehabilitation, as well as for people that are severely injured or sick getting treatment at intensive care units. Reading about these technologies, I understood from my history of illness, knowing how it feels to not be able to walk, and my knowledge as a neurobiologist, that in front of me I had a tool that can have a major impact in, on the life for people going through rehabilitation. I could also read that these techniques, technologies, they are safe, easy, and fusible for patients and therapists to work with, and that they are good, even if the end goal is not to relearn how to walk after an injury, since they also have shown beneficial effect on the cardiovascular system, the bowel function, the muscle strength, motivation, and the emotional well-being of patients. I was intrigued by this email. <laughs> I was intrigued by this in technology. And I directly responded to this organization saying, hey, you should work with me. And then I started to travel. During two years, I've been traveling on a regular basis to meet researchers, corporations, and clinics, clinics working with rehabilitation robotics throughout Europe. I wanted to know what kind of technologies is getting developed in the research labs, what kind of products are available on the market for the clinics to work with, and most importantly, I wanted to know how are clinics working with these technologies, what works, and why. Today, I have met several patients, therapists, and physicians that have told me that with the right implementations and the right protocols, these technologies can help a large proportion of the patients, depending on their injury or disease, and that the therapists are crucial for the success. This is the reason why I earlier this year decided that I will take time from my university position to also be active in the private sector to investigate how new innovative technologies in rehabilitation can reach patients that can benefit from them. So what do I think about these technologies as a neurobiologist? Well, to tell you about this, I want to introduce you to the nerve cells. These are cells that are different than other cells in our body. They are made for communication between each other and in complex networks through these glowing connection sites that we call synapses that we can learn and relearn after an injury is depending on these cells' ability to make memories. 
So if you keep something, an information in your mind for 30 seconds, we call it a short-term memory. The short-term memory can be moved into a long-term memory through high repetitive, high frequent, high intensive training. And what we're doing then on a, um, on a cellular level is that we are strengthening these connection sites between these cells or making new ones. And this sounds easy enough, but it's more to it. Animal studies have shown us that enriched environments actually change the brain, the cells of these animals living there, so they have more connection sites and perform better on learning tasks than the animals that are living in a non-enriched environment. And here comes something interesting in relation to injury and rehabilitation. If we start training of these animals early after an injury, they can regain completely the lost function. However, if we wait a week and then start a rehabilitation, they will get better, but they will never completely regain this ability. And this indicates that we have a window directly after injury when the cells are more prone to make new connections and restore a function. And we need to be aware of this when we do rehabilitation because we also know that patients who get early, high-intensive, high-frequent training are better off than the patients who do not get this. This brings us back to rehabilitation robotics. Because these tools are made to provide high-intensive, high-frequent training early after injury, as well as continuously if the disease or the injury requires it. And for you to be able to compare, a rehabilitation robotic session normally incorporates 10 to 15 minutes of preparation when we get the patients into the exoskeletons, 30 to 40 minutes of active walking, and five minutes of post-training care. In a conventional rehabilitation setting, for a person that can't walk or stand on his own, if possible at all, these people can do a maximum of less than 10 minutes of active walking. And this will incorporate then several physiotherapists manually moving the legs of this person with their own hands. So the reason why I have passion for rehabilitation robots is that I am convinced that these technologies provide exactly what is needed for our cells to make a connection and restore a function. And that is repetition, high intensive, high frequent training early, as well as continuously. I believe that we need to prioritize rehabilitation. I believe that we need a healthcare system that provides equal rights to every person to get training after an injury. And that new innovative technologies can reach the clinics with relevant information so they can do good for patients. Not only patients in some countries, or patients that are really rich. A life rescued must also be lived. And for that, we need rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is actually about people working really hard to regain their life quality after an injury or disease. I was there. Tomorrow it might be you, me again, your friend, even your child. Rehabilitation is about people. People like the lady I met in France, owner, former owner of two shops, mother of a teenager that today is fighting to get better after a stroke at an age of 46. It's about the old gentleman in Germany 
that 20 years ago had an incomplete spinal cord injury. And even if he did not get early high intensive high frequent <laughs> training, last year, with the help of a rehabilitation robot, he managed to get up and walk again on his own with minor support. And it's about the young man in Chicago with a complete spinal cord injury. That with high intensive training from a robot, managed to get the physical activity that makes him to feel physically strong and emotionally strong to live an active life. It's about Thomas, one of the few persons in Sweden that's been given the opportunity to train in a rehabilitation robot. And I talked to Thomas earlier this week, and he told me that one of the strongest effect for him to walk with a robot is that his body remembers how it feels to walk, even if he has a spinal cord injury. Lena, it's, it's like our muscles have a memory. I also like to quote Thomas when he received his first training session earlier this year in a rehabilitation robot. My mother told me that I was one year old when I took my first step. Today, I do it again at an age of 55. Thank you.